relationship partner moving forward is pay attention to that. And the way you get there is how you talked about it is in those moments where somebody's expressing pain or anger or sadness or fear, we seek to understand rather than imply that they're crazy or weak for feeling that way. Was there a light bulb moment where all the, the Rubik's cube clicked into place and you're like, now I get what she was talking about. Cause it wasn't like, Oh, the dishes. And it, it, there took some distance and some work and some, and, and some thinking to get some clarity on this. Was there something that you like you that made it all click together for you or was it just a process over time? It was it, it was it was mostly incremental improvement, but I want to give a shout out to the book that initially flipped like the first switch. It was called How to Improve Your Marriage Without Talking About It, which is a misnomer of a title. I don't agree with the title. Mm -hmm. It does it doesn't it suggests we don't have to communicate with our partners and that's not true. But it's called How to Improve Your Marriage Without Talking About It. It's by Stephen Stosny and Patricia Love. And they're, you know, two longtime therapists who did a bunch of you know, clinical research and interviews with people and what they were able to do. And it might have just been I don't know that they magically weaved the words together. It might have just been statistically speaking, it was the first time I encountered something that made that much sense to me. Mm -hmm. But I open these pages and they're describing all of these scenarios and all of these scenarios sound exactly like they were in my living room, like they were riding around in the car with us. And I'm like, oh, my God. This is unbelievable. And there's enormous power, power, like healing, something, something really, really profound happens when you believe you're like the only person dealing with some crap thing. And then you're like, oh my God, I'm not alone. Like mm -hmm. so many other people get this too. I don't feel like as freakish as I did. I don't feel as broken or as weak or as whatever. And um, that was extraordinary. And it's actually my favorite compliment to get is when people are like, do you have a camera in our house? And it's like, no, we just all have the same fights. Yeah. That, I mean, we always say that the the success of our, our live tour shows is that people come to it believing they're the only ones that feel a certain way and they leave knowing that everybody feels the same way. And there's a real comfort to that, that first of all, it tells you I'm not crazy. Secondly, it tells you I'm not alone. And second and third, there's some hope that like, Oh, we're all trying to, to do a little bit better and, and figure things out. And I asked you this on the last show. I'm not sure if I got an answer out of, out of it. You want it? Did you have the conversation? Was there a point where you had to own up and like call your ex-wife and say like, you know what? I get it. Here, here are the things that, that I should have done better. Or, did, or is it just, it didn't matter at that point. Is, it, does that give her any solace? No, it, I, I, I do think I, I can't speak to solace. I can speak to, She's either faking it in the most extraordinary way possible, in a way that I don't think is, is possible because she's somebody who just tells you exactly what she thinks and feels. She doesn't pretend. Mm -hmm. but So she's either started pretending or there's very genuine healing and mutual respect that's developed. And I, and I really want to believe the latter. We, we, we do a nice job co-parenting our son. And she invites me to holiday gatherings mm -hmm. with my former in-laws that I always decline because I'm too much of a whatever to go. Oh, really? And, and she's really cool. And like when she goes on vacation, like I'm the one that goes and like makes sure there isn't like whack stuff at the house and like feed the pets and things like that. Like I'm the person she trusts to do that. But and, and I like that. Don't you need from her that you're like, OK, I think I figured this out. Can you tell me if I'm right? I would need that. I would be like... <laughs> I know what I did wrong. I take complete ownership. Am I right? <laughs> I, I trust her to tell me if I'm not. Okay. She has read all this stuff. She's fully aware of this book. She's mm -hmm. fully aware of all of it. We've talked about it extensively. She's been pretty damn supportive considering she's the one who had to suffer the trash relationship in order for me to arrive at these conclusions. I, I think she's been pretty awesome about it. Um, but no, we didn't have that specific conversation in large part because I was sort of like too ashamed and all sorts of things at the beginning. And then she, she's been in a long-term relationship for five or so years, maybe even six. Mm. And that's, to me, that's an intimacy building conversation. Right. And maybe that's okay. Maybe that wouldn't in any way, shape or form be weird for her or for him. He's a, he's a really good guy. Right. Like I can trust them with my son and that is invaluable right. in a divorced mm -hmm. co-parenting oh, situation. Sure. So the last thing I would do is want to disrespect them. Yeah, it's just because you need it. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I right. I believe I would know mm -hmm. if she's like, you know what, Matt, it's really great that you're like helping these people and that they're finding their own 
like epiphanies from, you know, some of these things that you're sharing with them, but you still don't have me figured out yet. She's never said that to me. And I think she would if the condition exists. has he read your stuff. Her, her new guy? guy? I hope not. Because that feels like he's cheating off your test. <laughs> like, you figured out a lot of the stuff, and it's like, oh, man, I better not. Guarantee you he's not leaving the dishes uh, in the sink. one of the funniest things. I've, <laughs> I've never thought of that before. I was. Cheating off my test. He is. He's learned from the, I, you. You paved the path that he's going down. He's stepping in your footprints. I would yeah. not insult or disrespect him by <laughs> suggesting he needs my help to be a good dude. Hey, um, would, he seems I, like a genuine I would at least would dude. want the blueprints. That's but funny. again, and what, what, who she was at that time, because now you're going back many, many years, she's probably a different person now. Yeah. Like people will change in a relationship, but hopefully they're changing for the better. And hopefully you're growing towards something together. And hopefully you're learning each other. And a lot of times, especially when you go from husband, wife to mom and dad, you are so trying to keep the family afloat and dealing with the kids that you really are not paying attention to your spouse and not paying attention to your relationship enough. And, you know, I say that to somebody with no kids, but I hear it all the time. Yeah. I hear it all the time that it's like, I'm, I, I'm dealing with my five-year-old. I, my, if, as long as my husband, you know, shows up, I, I'm good. Yeah. And, you know, that's sad, but it's also practical. I understand it. Yeah. I, I thought that was interesting. I, I don't think I'd ever really thought about what you just said before, this idea that we're always growing. But I think that, I think that what's true is we contribute to like, if we think of it in like plant growth terms, the quality of the soil, mm-hmm. it, it, you know, it needs to be, or we need to have sunlight and water and, and nutrients and all these things. Otherwise, like, you know, everything withers and dies and it sucks. And I think that would be sort of the metaphoric equivalent of how I was showing up in my relation through this serial invalidator, a guy who didn't really consider my wife and, and, and just showed up in ways that she experiences disrespect and, I didn't value or respect her enough to take it seriously and do anything about it. But the people who do do those things, who validate and who consider in an effort simply for this other person, it's these things matter to you. So I'm going to treat them with respect because they matter to you and and not just get out of our own way all the time. That to me is like the sunlight and the water and the nutrients. And then a person can grow in like a really healthy way. But yeah, a person grows in some toxic, like... I think it's a valuable exercise. A lot of people um, look back and they think about the the best version of themselves or their life. I'm like, oh, me, I was so hot in my 20s or something like that. I think it's a, there's value to saying, what was the worst version of you? And hopefully that's not right now, but that could be, and you don't have enough distance from it to look at it. But like, what was the worst version of you? And I, you know, I would look at, I know exactly what that time period is. And I exactly when it was like, there was like a three year period when I'm like, I can't believe people dealt with me. I was such a cocky, uncaring fuck for quite a few years in my thirties that I'm like, oh my God. So I think about that all the time, like that version of me. And then it was like, what drove me to be that version or what were the triggers and what did I need that I was, I would act like that complete indifference to other people and not care and all those things. I think that's a worthwhile exercise because if people are like, no, I've always been fine. I don't believe you. And at least you have to, um, to look at that. And what was it that made you that way? Was it the relationship you were in? Was it insecurity? Was it your job? Was it, was it any one of things? What made, and if you're like, I think right now is it? Well, good. Then you have a starting point right, to go somewhere. Um, And the worst version of us can be in the relationship and have nothing to do with the relationship. And that's really unfortunate for the other person if they're getting the worst version of you, because that's not what they married, hopefully. That's right. And um, I I think that's, I I mean, I think that's the case. I I think when we first got together, she, she didn't know how to see these things because of how subtle they are. But something about what you just said, I was like, what was the worst version of myself? I remember being out to dinner with another couple one night. It was the four of us. And the girlfriend or wife of like the other dude that was on the other side of the table with us at this like, Italian restaurant we were at made a comment that she didn't like steak. Like she thought, you know, like ribeyes and filet mignon sucked. Mm-hmm. And back then I was prone to like give you shit if I thought your opinion was really bad. I'm like, who the hell doesn't like Well, steak? that's a legitimately bad opinion. Yeah, right. Right. <laughs> right. 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 I think it's so Ohio. Ins- I think it's insane. But, but. So I said something. I, I kind of like kind of poked fun at her, mm-hmm. kind of implied that I thought she had this like really shit opinion. We drove home later, just my wife and I, and she called me out on that. 
And something you said just now made me think of it. And I got really defensive. And I was like, that's bullshit. I was like, she doesn't like steak. And I told her I thought that was stupid, you know? <laughs> but I, I didn't I didn't understand this idea of how how shitty it can feel. It can mm-hmm. be experienced by someone else. And it makes sense that my wife would have been ultra sensitive to it because I would have done something like that to her daily probably implying that her music sucks or her, you know, the MTV shows she might've wanted to watch that right. I, I ripped on her for because I thought it was such trash television. And like, who the hell am I? I like, I'm the asshole, like poisoning the relationship. She was actually great. I mean, she yeah. didn't do weird, toxic things. I, I, I've, you know, I've got, I don't understand why people, um, watch the mask singer. I don't get it, <laughs> but a shitload of people watch the mask singer. Yeah. So I've looked at it like, like, I guess I'm missing something and that's on me. Yeah. Same. Rather than been like, you know, 45 million people a week are, are insane, which could be true. I'm like, I'm just not on the frequency that I get it. Yeah. And so that's different. So people have all kinds of tastes. Some people are Cleveland Browns fans. I don't understand. <laughs> it seems like a lifetime of pain. Yeah, and and some wrong. people don't like things and, and, and there are things that people like and understand in a way because we're, we're all sort of different. I am much more, so I would have been the same way as you. I'd be like, this is a crazy person who's not. What do you mean you don't want to buy? I and I, I would make the argument like, listen, you're not eating steak and I am, and I'm clearly enjoying my meal more than you're enjoying your meal. Don't you want to enjoy your meal the way I enjoy my? I would, I would have done the same. It's exactly the same, right? <laughs> the person that orders the salad and acts like it's equal or superior. I'm like, you don't like that as much. There's no chance. There's no chance. So I didn't let people think and feel the things they think and feel. I, I want to make it clear that it, it wasn't a hundred percent serious. I didn't like go home and stew about it and think they were a bad person, but I wasn't careful. I wasn't mindful of how people experience that when you judge their lived experiences, when you judge the things they believe and you judge the things they feel as wrong, mm-hmm. that can hurt people. And I think probably, probably women to a greater extent than men in the stereotype game, because I must have done that all the time to my guy friends yeah. and vice versa. And then didn't make room for other people not responding in a friendly way, the way all my guy friends always did. Um, uh, the point of no return in a relationship is usually what? When you don't want to fight anymore, when you stop talking about like, is there, and that's a weird question, but it, is there really- a, I, I think I can the way I'd answer it is to say the one I think is the most statistically common one. Um, I, I don't want to speak for everybody because everybody has diverse experiences, but I think the one that's the most common is that guys show up like we just talked about. Apply that steak versus salad conversation to every conversation about dishes by the sink and laundry and how often, you know, we're taking care of the kids or whatever. These common, relatively small, seemingly shared domestic responsibilities that cause so much conflict in relationships. We do this over time. This is how we show up. And our partners continue to feel a little bit less loved, cared for, respected, validated, considered, all of these ideas that matter so much to a relationship partner. And in heterosexual relationships, I believe that to be the woman more like seven or eight out of ten times. And, and she doesn't feel safe within the relationship. She doesn't trust them anymore. So she slowly like creates emotional distance between the two. And after a certain point, she's like, okay, it's now 10, 15 years of this. Mm -hmm. Apathy has set in. I no longer believe it's, it's, it's been 15 years. This has happened thousands of times. I no longer, I used to have hope that he would do something different tomorrow. I no longer have hope that he'll do anything different tomorrow. And that's to me when, when she or potentially he says they are not going to cooperate with me and stopping the thing that's hurting me, then you have to start making like your exit plan. And and that can take a while, particularly for a marriage. I think when children yeah. are involved, that can be a year or two. Yeah. And it's, you know, if I'm yelling at you, I care. Yes. If I just stop. If I don't say anything, I, I don't care anymore. And when the other person who is in their minds, at least the aggrieved party and they stop caring about it, that is usually the point of no return. Yeah, I believe that. Um, was there, I'm not gonna say, is there something in the book that you would have, um, changed or written different? Cause the book is present. Is there a thing like, you know what? I, I wish I had the opportunity to go deeper. I was just limited on this. And there's a, there's an area that I'm like, I'm, I'm really fascinated with this. And in my next book or down the road, I wish I could have gone deeper in this. 
Let's go. I had the opportunity to be on a British morning show today at the